So I saw two movies this time. Uh, of course, I saw that long anticipated and awaited Alien Woman Womanless. I uh, also saw a strange movie that takes a different look at the whole Exorcist, uh, you know, films that we've all been seeing for the past years, especially this past year with uh, the two one two ones with I think that the uh, uh, I forgot his name. He's gonna be in the new. He's going to be in that new uh, Craven movie, actually, Craven the Hunter. So, yep, let's get started on this week's film wave. Now, this weekend is not going to be really too big, but I thought I would show, talk about uh, Alien Womanist a little bit, since that this film is pretty much the one that I guess people have been waiting on ever since Deadpool and Wolverine, because... Well, you know, we need that we need that hype. And this film is actually getting a lot of hype. I mean, it's it's getting so much just fan service and expectations. People are already talking about the performance of Kaylee Spaney, who plays Wayne, the protagonist, and her supporting actor, David Johnson, playing the character of, of Andy, who is this synthetic, which is basically an android, and then, uh, you know, of course, Archie Renault, I guess his name, plays Tyler. Isabel Mercedes playing Kay. Mercedes is the is from, she's from notably last uh, this this past year in Madame Webb. And you got a few other actors. Uh, Aline Wu playing Navo Wu. It never really even says the characters' names besides Andy and Wayne. Uh, but then Bjorn, played by Spike Fionn. Now that I mentioned the primary actors, you know how it is if you've seen the first one. Actually, early this morning, uh, right before I took like a little nap, I saw the first Alien that came out, I think, 1979. And that was directed by, um, well, I, I forgot that that was directed by the original. Uh, I, I don't know why I forget his name, um, but... You know, it was directed by uh, Guy Witchy, I think. Um, no, wait, wait. Sorry, I've got my, I've, I've got my. Oh, directed by it's, got, it's the one with uh, Sigourney Weaver, Willie Scott. Uh, Willie Scott is known for directing. Looks like he's going to be directing um, the next Gladiator movies. And yep, uh, let's see, Blade One or. He is uh, going to be coming up with the Gladiator 2. He's a producer, anyway. And Napoleon. A few other things. House of Gucci. That was actually in the last duel. So his moves are kind of up and down. But Alien Romulus is actually pretty good. I saw the first Alien, like I said, 1979. And it had a good build-up. You know, you got your... Your your, uh, your baseline, making sure my door is locked. That's why I keep looking back. You got your good baseline. You establish the the location and the characters and what all they're trying to do and how this is going to relate later to the threat. And you had this long title entrance with the, the spelling out the word alien. So, you know, you got your egg. And I did a little bit of research. Apparently the creature um, known as... Uh, <laughs> It's called a, 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 I'm sorry, I forget the, Xenomorph, Xenomorph, that's right. So the Xenomorph, it evolves from like these other forms, there's these different, the different forms that it has, and it has like an egg form, and that itself is a, an organism that only hatches when there's a nearby, host then this this egg releases this upon hatching it releases this thing called a, a face hugger which pretty much latches onto your face and sticks something down your mouth to it's like releasing an embryo and that embryo um and it has to be living it has to release it into a living organism it can't kill the host once that once that's done the uh, eventually the the host survives for a little bit but then they'll start to spaz out and you know, 
starts to you start to see like something whipping through its chest, and this is when it's known as a um, a chest bolster, which is you know the, the the alien the embryo bursts through the chest and it becomes the, it's pretty much the larva form of this, and there's a whole rapid growth of uh, the um, the actual xenomorph. I think that's why they're called xenomorphs, and actually it doesn't stand on our fours our two both you know twos like that. It stands more like this. Uh, the th that we, I don't think, has a lot of intelligence. Kind of curious as to what the word Xeno means. It's a little bit weird. I think this is a certain little pro a prefix. But apparently, these creatures, you know, you can see these at Comic Cons. People dressing at, the, at, these, at these, at these, these aliens. They got this long head. Um, they've been used as a reference for quite a bit. So, and yeah, this is just a lot of. Different, well, a lot of different fa fa features of them. Anyway, so Alien and Alien Romulus are pretty much very, very similar. Once you watch Alien, you kind of know how Alien Romulus is going to be, and Alien Romulus looks just pretty much the same. You know, you got your discovery. So if this one's different, you got individual teenagers, well, young adults. They are pretty much, um, well, somebody finds a way to, there's this plan that is hatched. To get it as it hatched for more money, so that so they so they can afford to get off of the the planet, you know, if they can afford a transfer, so to speak, and so, you know, originally Wayne, played by Kaylee Spanley, does not want to do it. Um, Andy is a synthetic android that played by David Johnson. You know, everybody is saying that his performance is superb. And Andy is pretty much a brother to Wayne. She's looking after him because she knows he's weird. And he, he kind of has this Asperger, like autism, high functioning, high, high functioning uh, behavior. He's, you know, he's, you know, socially awkward. He's weird like me, uh, smart like me. But also he doesn't really seem to get along with people. And you think maybe he has some kind of, you know, social re retardation, which... And that's a real thing, by the way. I'm not just saying that just to, you know, poke fun and, you know, YouTube shouldn't, like, uh, do anything to this video, this live stream, because of that world. You can look it up. Um, he, he, he's very, like, quiet and stuff, and you can see how him and Wayne have a direct connection, and she's pretty much given him a directive. You know, a, his, his directive is to do what's best for Wayne. Uh, that's his, uh, that's his primary function, that's like his life's mission, and, you know, that's what he's programmed in, that's what she's programmed into him, that's what she has programmed into him, so, um, that's his primary directive, yes, and then, you know, Andy's up for the mission, but Wayne does not want to go, and she definitely doesn't want him to get in trouble, and anyway, um, so the guy that hatches this plan, he, uh, is Tyler. Tyler has this idea, and of course on board with it is Bjorn and his, his sister Kay, who we find out is actually pregnant, and the father is not known. But anyway, um, we, we just, they end up on the spaceship, and, the, you know, the, the first alien is hatched within, I guess, the first 30 minute mark, within the first act. Contrary to the first Alien that came out in 1979, the original, it it took a good long hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes until we've seen some Alien action. Well, at least an hour. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, they arrive on that planet and then they see those eggs with the carefully the eggs and, you know, the one, uh, one face hugger latches onto the, that character's face. And I'm not going to say in case anybody's never seen the movie. I just watched, I just watched the first Alien just, just early this morning, so, um... But, you know what I'm talking about once you've seen it. And for those of you who've already seen it, you know what I'm talking about. So, And then, uh, this, whatever happens, he, he the, the alien eventually comes out of his chest. and But it doesn't go into it like they could kill him. They try to cut it off through like one of his legs, but its blood happens to be acid. And this acid, once again, talking about the first alien, starts to leak through layer by layer. Um... Floor by floor, deck by deck, all in, into it stops, and they just and they see how bad 
the situation is or how it's getting. And I'm going to go back to the original cast here. So this is Cain, but played by John Holt. He's the one that is got the face hugger on his face. And then, you know, the characters Lambert, Dallas, Ripley, and even Parker, all of them are, oh, and, you know, Ash is, you find out he's the actual first synthetic android. Oh, and also Brett. So, so basically as a recap, Parker and Brett, you know, played by Yafet Kodo and, ha and Harry Dean Sh uh, St St Stanton, respectively, they're the maintenance crew. They're the maintenance guys of the alien ship, whatever it's called. And, you know, you got your main characters played by, you got your other characters, supporting characters. Ash is a synthetic a android, he's played by Ian uh, Holm. Lambert, played by Veronica Cartwright. This is the first time I've ever seen her, and I, I, didn't, I didn't recognize her this whole. John Holt plays Kane, who is the guy that has the face hug on his face, you know, on him. Uh, Dallas played by Tom Skirt and Ripley played Ripley played by Sigourney Weaver. This is Sigourney Weaver's first major film, you know. Um, I guess the the next one being Aliens. Anyway, so Kane has you know he's 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 put in this cryo chamber. They're trying to figure out how to take that off. They end up cutting the leg. The blood leaks all the way through all the decks, and you know, uh, at, if Dallas realizes it stops. So they have an idea to not basically cut the creature. It's like a defense mechanism that the creature has to make sure nobody messes with them. And so what happens is uh, they end up still trying to find a way, like basically freeze it or something, to get it off of Kane's face. And eventually they do. You know, and the way the way the monster attacks is kind of like, it's not really suspenseful enough. But apparently I did some research and, yeah, it's... It, it, the the, the I'm still trying to remember the names. The face hugger ends up dying once it did its job of releasing the embryo into the host. After some time, and there was like a good, I don't know, at least five to seven minutes, Kane is obviously hungry. From He wakens from his coma. They have this little dinner or meal. And during that meal, uh, Kane starts to spaz out and... They get him on the table, and then eventually the little embryo, known as a chest bolster, you know, breaks through his stone on his ribcage in his chest, comes out, and just, you know how the CGI was back in the 70s, goes through, goes, goes to the floor, and later on it becomes this big xenomorph. It has like a rapid growth, and you don't see it grow or anything. You barely even see the creature, because what's scarier than the creature is the anticipation of the creature. We can immediately see Sigourney Weevil in the same uh, limelight final girl as Jamie Lee Curtis in the, the Halloween franchise. You know, there's always a woman that survives. And the same thing happens with Alien Wildness, played by Kaylee Spaney. So anyway, what I'm, what I'm getting at is, it's a good long hour into the film before you start to see any alien activity. And then it's just a, cra a, a casual pick off the crew, you know, uh, you know, we have certain characters die all with, you know, with leaving Whitley, Whipley as the only survivor, the final goal. You know, and that kind of sets it up for sequels. So, going all the way back to IMD's Alien Wildness, it's pretty much that. Like, what happens in Aliens happens in Alien Wildness. It's the same formula. Slow pickings of the characters. Pretty much all six characters. Hold on just one second. Yeah. Minus the seventh one. And Ian doesn't count because he's an android girl. So, yeah. And, and by the way, um, the, the synthetic android from the first one, Ash, he's in Alien Wildness, but as a CGI, CG copy of him. A CGI copy of, a, of his former self. And, you know, they find this, this thing lying on the ground and they plug it up and they demand it give it answers, and he starts to give them answers and explain the project of the uh, of, uh, of the ship. They were just trying to find some type of resource to take back and sell to be able to afford to get a transfer. But little did they know that the ship that they stumbled upon called Romulus is so 
it, it's, it's used as an experimentation in a lab. They're trying to experiment with this alien species, and according to Ash, they're trying to do something along the lines of, uh, it was involving prolonging, prolonging humanity. I won't get into spoilers tonight, and I'll try to talk about it later during maybe Sunday's film wave to give people a chance to see it. Um... You know, I love to talk about it, but I feel like I have to see it a second time to be able to thoroughly express it. I will say the performance is really good with uh, Kaylee Spanley and, and David Johnson in the roles of Wayne and Andy, respectively. But what I will feel see, feel about this movie is that it's um it's often actually very Gen Z. Chris Gore said this: it's Gen Z playing the characters, Generation Z called Zoomers. And I wouldn't have a problem with it, it's just that they, they look so young in the movie. And I'm thinking, there is no way you expect me to believe that some kids are typing away at computer terminals and controlling aircraft, spacecraft, I'm sorry, you know, you know, in, in, in outer space. Uh, and... It's just, it's, it seems so fictional that they look so short and so thin and their faces are so young and it's just like they're tapping away at controls and buttons and, and flipping switches and doors are just opening and, you know, firing the engines and putting on the defenses and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's just, I, I didn't expect to really, I, kind of, I mean, I kind of saw it in the trailer, but I don't know, it just feels so not real, you know? The first alien felt more real because everybody in that movie is at least 30 years old. 30. And up. And so it's just, that looks more like, yeah, these these um, people, these, these walkers, these space walkers, whatever, whoever they are, they are, they look their age. You know, they look the part. And, uh... These kids didn't look like they're the part. I mean, of course, they're not with the official, you know, uh, employed space crew. But. Sorry, I had to get my, my notepad because I, I took a few interesting notes, I think, that I want to mention. You know, I like to take notes sometimes when I'm watching a movie, so. I don't think I took that, so that's this time. Oh, well. Sometimes I'll see um, some some key things. I like to just write, jot them down, especially on my phone, my OneNote, but I try not to do that because I don't want to bother people doing, uh, doing a movie, especially doing something as big as Alien Wamalus, at least until maybe uh, Monday or Tuesday, if I ever see it again. But yeah, so this, this movie is... I don't think it's as... I don't see what the hype is, honestly. I'm not a fan of of the Alien franchise. Um, to me, it's the same thing. Maybe because I've already seen a bunch of monster creature features. And it's the same old, same old. I am interested. I am interested in the, like the evolution of the Xenomorph and to find out where it came from and the whole Prometheus thing. Oh, by the way, there is a huge surprise at the, near the, in the third act that... You know, relates to. It relates to. Um, it's an image I found from my thumbnail here. You can see that I created in my thumb, my thumbnail, and. You know, I downloaded this image from the internet. That that's a good image, but that's of course a trailer. The image is this, so. I'll go ahead and show this. So this image right here is, you know, if you look close, you can see a baby. It, it oh shit, sorry. There's there's the xenomorph, but this is the baby right here. It's a human baby, and you wonder what's the xenomorph doing with the human baby, and that's kind of a good, that's actually a, 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 an excellent way to foreshadow what happens in the third act. Once again, I won't say it. I'm not going to spoil it. So, yeah. But, you know, do go see this movie. It's worth it. Uh, I give it a 7 out of 10. I think that's pretty good. Because for a first showing, hey. It's directed by Fetty Alvarez. Um, I'm, I don't, I'm not really familiar with his work. 
I've probably seen some movies that he's made. Oh yeah, The Girl in the Spider's Web, Evil Dead I've seen, and Don't Breathe, Don't Breathe 2, Texas, this is what he's written. I try to get the director alone. And, you know, he, he, he he's kind of, I guess, still new, maybe up and coming. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, yeah, so, you know, this is what he's known for. Most recently, Don't Breathe. Anyway, um, so, I wish I could talk more about it, but I kind of feel like I have to move on. Um, maybe I'll come back to it eventually. But, uh, yeah, that's that's all I really have to say about Alien Romness on my part. I, I know what my weekend fun waves, I like to see what other people think. But uh, I just kind of want to start this one telling my own thoughts about, you know, uh, the movies I've seen. The second movie I've seen is this new f- upcoming movie called Deliv- the, the Deliverance. Now, I thought this was going to be some... I didn't know how to really read this movie. Even when I saw the trailer, I, th- I was thinking, okay, exorcist movie or some kind of actual religious faith-based movie, you know. And, you know, you know when you see black people and in some, some title like Salvation or Deliverance or something like that, it's kind of making you think, okay, it's about black people's story of getting deliverance and, and, and being, you know, considered, a, you know, in these these negative derogatory lights. Like, uh, for instance, the, the, uh, the whole fact that their lives are not as grand or splendid and they often struggle and so things like that. So, which is actually in this movie, it's a good bit of the movie, and this movie is going to Netflix on August the 30th, it's, I don't think it's coming to theaters, uh, I can look it up real quick if it is, but I don't think it is, and the reason why I mentioned that it's going to Netflix, and you can obviously see it from that, is because, you know, I was, there was rumors of alien wominess going to Netflix, but it wasn't. It, 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 it didn't go to Netflix, you know, thankfully. Um, this movie, I thought, should have been released to theaters because it's actually pretty good. It, I actually liked it better than Alien Romulus. Um, If I don't like it better as a, as a movie as a whole, I like it better as, I like it well enough as a, de- a movie of its, of its own because while Alien Romulus is based on s- established IP, this is different. The Deliverance is different. It does come from other movies like the Exorcist franchise, obviously. But it's its own it has a different spin, it has a different storyline and uh it's it's you know, it's different. Uh, I want uh, apparently it's not coming out. And I saw this one at the uh, landmark opera cinema plaza in San Francisco. And so you have the let's go ahead and establish the cast members. So you have Andrea Day. Which you know she plays the the mother Ebony. She's this single mom. Her husband is off to fight the war in Iraq in in Iraq or something like that. He's a she's a, he's a soldier, and she's stuck with three kids. And yes, I mean to say stuck with because that's kind of how it's portrayed in the movie. Uh, it's not that she regrets being stuck with them, but she doesn't regret. She does she doesn't like being a single mom. It's hard because she you knows she. As she notes, and, and you know, she pretty much personifies a lot of uh, black women that are single moms that have more than one kid. You know, it's hard enough to raise one kid, but you know, and not not even raising three. So she's got three kids, each with separate ages. Uh, Glenn Close that plays Alberta. She is Ebony's mother, her biological mother, I might add, because. And some may some may ask you know may ask, is Ebony black or mixed? Because she seems to be light toned. Because with biracials such as myself, you can look at us and tell, just based on our eye color and our skin color, we're not exactly fully African American. We seem to be mixed with something. So you get that that from her when you look at her. And, and uh, you know people wonder is Alberta the character Alberta her real mother or her adopted mother? And you know. She does later confirm in the film that, you know, yeah, she, that's her actual birth mother. Uh, so her birth mother was white, like my own. And you now I'll talk about them in, in briefly. So Albany has this, this very aggressive and sometimes assertive attitude towards people 
even our own kids and our own family and friends. And it's just, it's what some people would consider ghetto. And you know what I mean by that. Our brother, our brother has a similar personality, but she's a little bit more let up over the years because she doesn't want to go back into her past of how she was. Apparently, um, you alone, if you watch the movie and pay attention, that Alberta was abusive to Ebony, which is why Ebony herself is so abusive to her children. She at one point slaps her youngest. She slaps. She slaps her youngest boy, um, who who bad who, who bad mouths her Andre, played by Anthony B. Jenkins, and uh, he apparently wants some you know some milk. He's lactose intolerant, and she's told him that, you know, he, he shouldn't have drunk that glass. He doesn't get any more milk. And, you know, he back mouths her, so she slaps him, you know. And, and, you know, he starts to bleed in his mouth. And you'll see, as I describe what happens, I, I might kind of spoil this movie. I feel like I shouldn't, but uh, anyway, this this movie is, uh, it's definitely intense. It's definitely, there's funny moments. Sorry, I, I did kind of spoil it, but I'm not really going to spoil it outside. I'm not going to spoil it. I'll talk about it later. Maybe I'll talk about it, uh, I think, I guess Sunday. It's kind of coming out the 30th, so I don't know if I should. But, uh, well, I'm going to spoil a little bit. The coming Sunday. But what what goes into it is that uh, it's um, it's quite it's quite intense, you know. And there's obviously some evil going on, going on, but it doesn't happen until like a whole hour into the film, you, or at least 45 minutes. You start to see the evil come through with the possessions and the weird contortions and the weird just, you know, things that mark films like uh, The Exorcist. And just like Alien, the first Alien, you, you get to see the the everything from... The uh, water material, basic elements of, that establish the narrative. You see the characters, you see the plot, you see the story, you see the backstory and everything, the setting. Before any of the plot is, is, is introduced, you know, you got that, that basic character establishment. And that, you know, just like the first alien, you know, before any alien species is introduced, even before the egg, you got the, all the characters shown. And this is what happens here, too. And uh, you've got... The mother, Ebony, and her, her mother, and the, you know, her kids, the, her three, or two sons, and one daughter. Her daughter is Ashanti, played by Demi, uh, Dem, Demi Singleton. Uh, also, I can't say her name, and Junani Ellis Taylor. She was in, recently, she was in Origin, what, what I thought was a bullet movie. She plays Reverend Bernice James. Uh, Monique, she's in this movie, plays Cynthia Henry. She's a, um, Cynthia Henry, she's a, um, a child care services worker, or child services worker, child protective services worker, I, sh I should say. A, a social worker that works with children. She's working with Ebony because apparently Ebony has a past, and she wants to make sure that her kids are taken care of, and... You know that she that there's no abuse going on stuff like that. Otherwise, she would have to have the children taken away and put into somebody else's custody. Uh, Melvin plays this. Melvin is this nurse played by Omar Alps. Omar Alps is from he's he's from a, a, a show. I think it's ER. You know, oh House. He's where he he's a nurse, so he's playing a similar character. <laughs> nurse. Anyway, yeah. Nate, her elder, oldest son, is play is played by Caleb McLaughlin. <laughs> McLaughlin, and uh, yeah, he he's the more sensible one that is aware of his mother's drinking problem. She's an alcoholic. That's Ebony. It's an alcoholic, and Shanti is also like well aware of the more aware of the mother's issues than Andre is. But all three characters, especially especially Nate and Shanti, this. You know, they all cuss, you know, they, they, they use the B word. She even calls, Shanti even calls her mother a bitch. And, and Ebony and Alberto, they call each other a bitch. So it's kind of like this, you know, it's disrespectful, but it, it, it fits within the the world of that this movie is. It's, it's not just this demonic, evil, exorcist movie, 
it first establishes a, like a pretty normal thing in, in you know, almost again, in a black community. But that, that's what makes this movie so real. It's not fictional like Alien Romulus. Yeah, it is fictional in how the demon is betrayed, the demon later, but it's, at least the, the setting of it is more real. It's more down to earth and those even funny moments. It's, it's, it, it gives you a good representation, representation, of the black community in that it pokes fun at some things, but also it takes that seriousness, seriousness that you see. And, and while you want to be detested at the behavior, you can understand it. And it's, it's just that level of drama that makes it seem like you you appreciate this representation of, of, that, of that part of the community. Because, you know, often the black community is minimalized and marginalized to the point where people don't want to see that. But when they show it in a film, such as in the way they're showing it, it's not in a disgusting manner so much as it is in the way that this is how it is at times. But it does it for this family. It, it, they don't really represent every single black family, but this post in Ebony, her family is really, well, effed up. And the demon plays on that, as you can see. You'll see later as you watch the movie. Once again, I really don't want to go into spoilers, but it all relates to her, uh, you know, her version of deliverance here. And, you know, essentially salvation. So she's, you know, she goes through a whole character change by the end of the movie, and that's what you want to see in a film. You want to see a struggling character, and she goes through something to the point where she wants to change her behavior. Not just like in, you know, a believer way, I'm talking about Christians, but as a character, she wants to, she develops. She doesn't just remain the same. Like, one could say Wayne does kind of go through a character development in Alien Romulus, but she's pretty much going to be the same. Just like Ridley, Ripley. Ripley, I, I'm assuming, I haven't seen any of the Alien movies besides this, you know, from start to finish. She's, she's made go through some some character development, obviously. But she's, at the at her core, the same. If anything, she just gets, goes through more training of how to be more of a badass. But this character, in this more realistic movie, Ebony, she actually goes through a different change, you know. By the end of the movie, and her family is, is all the better for it, and it's based on a true story. It's, it's it's exaggerated, of course, but it says at the beginning of the film, based on true events, and also the thing about it is you I actually forgot that part until the end of it when I saw the picture of the real woman, and it, it, once again it said based on a true story, and I'm thinking to myself that uh yeah this. This really is based on a true story. It's an exaggeration, like I said, but it, it doesn't seem like it's based on a true story, but yet it is. And, um, and I'm gonna, I wanna look that up. So, Lee Daniels announced he was taking on a movie project based on. I don't have, I'm not using Bing. Based on the real life case of Latoya Amunds, a single mother who claimed that her house was haunted, that her children were being possessed by evil spirits, and that she needed a deliverance. In other words, an exorcism. So, this is the name of the real person, Latoya Amunds. While she's been rewritten, you know, I guess to protect her name. Is Ebony. You know, it, it's based on true events, but they have changed some key, some key names, and maybe key locations. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, the character Ebony is from. Philadelphia, because she says we're going back to Philly at the end. Yeah, that's a little, I know that's a little bit of a spoiler, but uh, it is a little spoiler. But yeah, that it's a good, it's a good, it's good to know that it's it's it's, it's loosely based on a true story. Like it's it's based on a true story, but of course, there's just some re, there's some rewrites to to protect names and to you know set it apart. But yeah, um, definitely enjoy this movie more than Alien Wilderness. Just because of how real it was. And I don't know. Alien Wallace, it just looked too fake. Like, how can you expect me to believe? And I've always said this. 
more more or less children, you know, teenagers, but young adults, controlling the spacecraft and handling guns and fighting off against aliens. And, of course, they all die because, you know, they're not there to really fight. They're not soldiers. They're, just, they're, they're there to just steal something from a spaceship and sell it at the hospital. But, you know, Wayne, she survives. And, um, you know, it's kind of like a Claire Redfield and Resident Evil 2 type of vibe. But still, it's this movie, The Deliverance, it has more of a real, real, realistic approach to even, you know, albeit all the demonic stuff that happens in film, it's still more real. At least the setting. This one, this alien romance, you can tell it's just, is of course it's fictional, and because in, in Deliverance, I couldn't figure out if it was like this once again exorcist like movie, which I know is fictional, or is it going to be a realistic tale? And it's a bit of both, just from the cinematography alone and the way it the t music is. But in this one, alien romance, you can tell by the cinematography and the music that's obviously a fictional space horror, science fiction movie, whatever. I mean, look, it's got monster horse, space sci-fi, horror, sci-fi, thriller, while the deliverance falls underneath horror and thriller. But, yeah, uh, so, I, I should rate this movie, I should rate this movie, um, I'm gonna rate it an 8. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna rate it about, yeah, I'm gonna rate it an 8. Uh, you've seen some things like that before. You've seen like the contortions and all the body horror of of, of uh, Exorcist movies, but this one is different. And but it's still in the movie, so I kind of did cringe at some of the, the the demonic stuff, and you know the transformation and the moving around, walking backwards, climbing on walls. I was like, yeah, this 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 again. But like I said, at least it doesn't go into the trope of uh, the woman, you know being relocated to the Vatican, to Italy, and now she's a nun, and now she's, you know, being uh, praised as as, this, as the new vessel for some holy baby or some savior or antichrist, like the two films I saw with both, um, with both Immaculate and another movie I saw that was pretty much the same, I forget, what, oh, oh, the, the First Omen. The First Omen and Immaculate were kind of the same. There's this woman that's admitted. She 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 joins the sisterhood in the Vatican in Rome, Italy, and while she's learning her craft and learning to be, you know, holy or whatever, she is pretty much chosen to be the the mother of a antichrist of an antichrist. Both films were somehow like that. I don't know if they were. I don't know if both the writers and the directors were all friends and they just decided to, you know make their own movie, but use the same idea, but, no, The Deliverance is different, it, it's a, uh, it's definitely a different movie than those, but, of course, Alien Wominous is just using the same alien IP established by Whitley Scott, uh, I want to keep saying Whitley Scott, but I know it's Whitley Scott, I get that confused with Whitley and Whitley, because, you know, that D can just simply be flipped, Anyway, uh, I still have yet to watch the Alien 2, the second Alien movie, titled Aliens, which is like the continuation of Whipley's, um, Whipley's story. And actually the continuation of Alien Romulus, because Alien Romulus is stuck in the middle between 1 and 2. It's kind of like a, a side story, a, a um... A side, a kind of like a side project, a, 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 another character story, you know, that's kind of out of canon, just made on the side, if you will. Like, you know, a lot, a lot of franchises do that. You know, you have a there's, a, there's a Penguin series coming out, I think, on Netflix, about the character Penguin from the Batman franchise, all played by Colin Farrell, you know, played by Colin Farrell from his recent take on the character in The Batman, you know, so I think it came out in 2022, 2020, 2022, yes, one of the best movies that year, so you can see I'm kind of tired, so my review is not that heavy, I'm trying not to spoil it, minus the little spoilers I just did, uh, I was thinking about doing a quick little film wave uh, about it, and I, I, I saw... <laughs> 
some more some more stuff I will say. So I'm gonna go ahead and load my uh God. I'm gonna go ahead and load my history. I forgot to go on the film screen, my a full screen, I apologize. Uh, uh, shit. I'm just gonna go ahead and see what Chris thinks. I know he's a fan of this franchise. He doesn't even have to say it. See it on the face. Alien Romulus is not directed by Ridley Scott, as both Prometheus and Covenant were, but he does return as a producer, this time around Fetty Alvarez as is taking the reins. While scavenging the deep ends of a derelict space station, a group of young space colonizers come face to face with the most terrifying life form in the universe. But before we go any further, I do want to give a special thank you to the sponsor, Sony, and the Sony Bravia 7 TV. This is an incredible TV at an amazing value. It has things like the new XR Backlight Master Drive, with similar lighting control to the flagship model. It controls thousands of ultra-dense mini-LEDs with absolute precision and independence for incredible contrast. Also new is the acoustic multi-audio, with dual woofers, dual mid-range drivers, sound position tweeters, voice zoom through acoustic center sync and they've expanded their studio calibrated modes these modes take nearly two years of collaboration with each studio to ensure the creator's vision is exactly what you see in your living room Sony Pictures core has a calibrated mode to ensure you're getting the best quality and premium formats on your chosen content prime video calibrated mode optimizes the picture settings depending on what you're watching to always get the best picture quality no matter the content and Netflix Adaptive Calibrated Mode optimizes picture settings for Netflix content while using the TV's ambient light sensor. If you'd like to learn more about the Sony Bravia 7 TV, check out the link in the description below. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video. Big expectations for this one for me because I'm a That's massive good. fan of the Alien movies, but I also... See? feel like I'm a fan that appreciates variation because I really like Prometheus and not a lot of people do. In fact, I love Prometheus. I really like that it felt extremely different and that it took such a big swing in so many different ways. I remember reading... I know some people uh, like hate Don Chris Stuckman for saying that because they think he's not really reviewing it. He's just uh, talking nice about the film. Reading the late Roger Ebert's review of it and just being like, yes, we're yes you get it and not everybody liked that movie more people wanted the xenomorph lots more xenomorph alien covenant was a mix of both you had a little bit of prometheus in there that i really appreciated but then it tried to be what the fans want in quotations and this time around we had the filmmaker behind the 2013 evil dead as well as don't breathe giving his own take on alien and in every way you can tell that someone who is well versed in horror has stepped into this movie because the science fiction element of the film is, of course, present. It's everywhere you look. It's in some of the tech. It's in some of the characters. But in regards to big ideas, this movie is less interested in that, and it's more interested in horror, in putting characters in a place where there is a monster. And that's kind of what the first movie did. And in every way, this movie is hearkening back to that. In some places, I can see fans looking at it and saying, just you're like just the doing person. the same old thing all over again. And there are certainly moments of this movie that were fan service or that were callbacks. I won't get into any specifics, of course. But it never really got to the point where it was getting under my skin. There was a CGI element that I felt was a bit unconvincing. But it's not that it took away from the story. I thought the story of this was just fine. It was just looking at it where I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm, if I'm buying that. But who I absolutely bought was Kaylee Spaney. She's terrific as the lead of this film. It has a very interesting relationship with a friend that has been with her for a very long time. And both her and him have a very unique relationship. And throughout the movie, it evolves in extremely exciting ways. And I think that dynamic gave the movie a real emotional edge. Again, not going to get into the specifics because it hasn't really been talked about that much and I didn't really watch too many of the trailers because like I've talked about in the past I really like going into these things and being like oh I didn't expect that was going to happen so there are quite a bit of elements in this movie that surprised me considerably and also it's don't breathe in space and when I say that you might think oh it's a bunch of characters hiding from the xenomorph and trying to escape and yes 
that is absolutely true. Every alien movie has sequences like that, but it's more specific than that. It really does feel like the pitch was don't breathe in space, right down to the characters themselves, their lot in life, their specific struggles, why they're on this space station and what they're trying to get out of it. And of course, the unexpected surprise and don't breathe was Stephen Lang as the blind man being a lot more skillful than they thought. And in this film, it's the perfect organism. So if you like the idea of don't breathe, but instead of Stephen Lang, <laughs> it's a xenomorph and they're in a space station you're probably going to enjoy romulus if you want more big ideas like prometheus or even parts of alien covenant then this movie is going to disappoint you but if you just want really great set pieces with a xenomorph and a lot of good scares you're going to have fun with this it does kind of feel like the biggest budget fan film of all time but really every filmmaker who could ever make an alien movie at this point in our timeline is a fan of alien and it would be a fan film because we all love that movie and so anybody who gets a chance to make it would obviously be chomping at the bit to do it but i don't mean that as an insult i mean that you can feel the love on every frame you can feel that fetty alvarez has such a reverence for this material and it shines through and speaking of those set pieces there was one in particular that i thought was absolutely brilliant i'll just say that it involves gravity and the lack of it that was a great idea an extremely effective scene and lastly as i was watching it i felt like i was in this very strange loop because of course i love alien and aliens and then i played dead space when i was in my 20s and dead space 2 and dead space 3 and i love those games and as i was watching this movie i was like this reminds me of dead space and then i realized that dead space <laughs> was very much so inspired by alien and I love all of those properties. And so it was just this really weird, like, paradox where I, I realized I was watching all of these things that all kind of smushed into each other and became something very entertaining. Guys, I hope you enjoy Alien Romulus this weekend. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized. I really wish I was there. I think you can probably guess where the... Mm. Well, I can't watch this one. Now. Mm. Guys, what's up? I just got out of Alien Romulus. Do me a favor before I get into this. Subscribe reviews for this. I'm going to be doing rankings. AVP, the two AVP movies. I will if you guys want me to. Okay? But I think you can probably guess where those are going to go. But anyway, setting the ground rules. I am a massive Alien fan. It's my second favorite franchise behind Halloween as far as horror goes. And um, I just love this franchise so much. So what I will tell you right now is this movie is so filled with sensitive material in the way of spoilers uh, that uh, I, I'm not looking forward to doing that spoiler-free review, okay? Because there's going to be alien eggs everywhere and parasites could jump out at me all right so i gotta be i gotta be very careful um if you are a massive fan of this entire franchise fede alvarez has really put something for everybody in this movie while still maintaining a cohesive story if you're looking for horror alien like the first movie oh my god you're definitely gonna get it okay and if you're looking for some ambition it's here too that's all i'm gonna say um, there are things about this movie that I think are going to be a little controversial. Let me put that out there right now, all right? Because the risks, creative risks are definitely taken in this movie. I ended up loving it, all right? I do need to let it percolate for a little bit, but right now, I'd say as an Alien fan, this might, might be top five of the year for me horror-wise, all right? It's really ambitious 
I'm going to give it that for sure. And it looks amazing. It looks amazing. It, this is definitely a Fede Alvarez horror movie. Okay. And it just happens to be alien. All right. Uh, really creative though. You're going to see things in this movie that uh, are not even explored in the other alien movies okay so that's that's all i'm going to give you right now be sure to come back after the embargo lifts for the full spoiler free review even spoiler free i could talk about quite a bit but, but oh my god once i get to the spoilers boy we got to do some talking all right crazy stuff all right so yeah that is my out of theater reaction highly recommending this movie though for you guys all right definitely check it out uh alien romulus okay so anyway guys thank you so much for watching i can't wait for you guys to see this movie all right Love you guys. Mwah. It's funny she's talking about the quo uh, because of, um, you know, it's coming out next week, this coming week. Well, here's the. I'm Daniel Lurie, and I'm the only candidate that's built affordable housing on. I kind of don't want to watch this bowl of you myself. Uh. first two movies are so well revered and, and, and well loved not to take anything away from the other movies in the franchise the sequels um aside from those first two movies though was there anything from like say maybe the other movies like alien 3 or resurrection that uh, might have given you a little bit of like maybe you liked that certain uh set piece or or that whole sequence alien Romans, it is a love letter to all of them you know all the filmmakers that worked in this franchise happen to be my favorite filmmakers you know uh, all of them so the um, so it is there's quotes in in language and images and lines and visuals of all kind to all those movies and they're all my nods to to the masters of this genre making this this films so there's 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 not just it transcends alien and aliens alien romulus all the spoilers and there are a lot of them let's go i'm not gonna watch it because uh, i don't want to spoil it yeah i don't want to spoil it right now i'm not gonna watch this either but this is uh snarky j's prediction there she goes with that fucking i might watch that just to make fun of it but uh right now Oops, so me, okay. Romulus is the latest film in the Alien franchise. We're now up to like, what is it? Seven movies for the Alien franchise? Is that what it is? But this is the seventh Maybe. film. Honestly, I've, um, seen, I've only seen the first one. To be yeah. honest, I've seen Alien and Aliens about a hundred times each. All the other Alien movies, Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, Prometheus, Alien Covenant, I've seen those maybe once or twice each. My memory of Alien is those first two movies. Same with the Terminator franchise. This latest film has a, a new creative direction under the uh, direction and writing of Fede Alvarez. Alan, tell us the story briefly of Alien Romulus and we will be doing spoilers for this review. You will be warned in advance. Alan, take it from here. All right. We are on a mining planet somewhere out in the universe. Uh, young Rain Carradine and her android buddy Andy uh, are there. And uh, she has earned enough credits to uh, get off the planet and, uh, and live a normal life. And, and maybe see the sun for the first time in her life. But no, because of the need for more workers and laborers, her time credits uh, have doubled, and now she must work another five years uh, to to pay off her debts. Uh, frustrated, she and her uh, young band of Gen Z friends go off and mm -hmm. steal a ship. Uh, they need to get cryopods so that they can escape uh, to uh, to another colony. Um, 
And in order to get the cryopods, they go to this abandoned space station where there are aliens aboard. And those aliens are beginning to hatch and, uh, and hug their way into existence. Uh, can they survive? What's up with this Andy android? Are there any connections with the original film? Well, that's Alien Romulus. Well, that's the setup of the first, yeah. maybe, first act of the movie. Yeah, first 20 minutes. Let's get into it. I have major problems. This movie is a greatest hits of the Alien franchise by a cover band. You know, I, I've said before, um, uh, J.J. Abrams' Force Awakens. I mean, J.J. Abrams is a George Lucas cover band. His Star Wars is like a bad cover band. This is all the sort of, oh, I remember that. Remember that from Alien? And that's what this is. It's And that's what bothered me. There's, and we're going to get into spoilers. So if you're still here, spoilers are going to abound. My, that's my biggest problem with this film is the, the, the fact that it's a cover band aspect. It's like it's the things you remember from other alien movies just not done as well. The characters are all Gen Z. They, they don't have the grizzled. You believe when you watch the first alien that they are grizzled space truckers you know they're like you but you buy it they're, they're otherwise known as adults they're blue adults. color workers you know yeah just yeah. like our parents were you know in in this film i just didn't these 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 gen z kids they're all orphans i didn't really buy it the best actor in the movie is uh well, the best character is andy played by david johnson callie spaney was fine as rain Carradine. i just wasn't she didn't have the weight of like a, a sigourney weaver when you go back and watch the first alien or aliens look you know what makes it scary and this is the the biggest problem i have with this movie it's not scary we've seen this before i never feel like i already know that anyone that's not the character of andy or rain they're all fodder to be slaughtered, right? Because they're not fully developed. All those characters are going away. So I never felt any fear. Watch Sigourney's acting. Why is are those two first two alien movies iconic? It's the acting. It's not the effects. It's not, it's the way Sigourney Weaver as Ripley reacts to every situation. It's like, you see this pained look, you see the real fear on her face. I never got that from any of these actors. I thought they were all lightweights compared to the original cast. They didn't sell fear to me. They it just, they just didn't, I didn't believe it. So, um, and aside from the fact that there is a, a, a cameo from a legacy character in this movie that took me out of the movie. We're talking about the character of Rook, who is, uh, they discover this um, other android who's left at the space station. His name is Rook, who looks just like Ian Holm, who played Ash. He's another version of Ash, I guess, but he's Rook. And he's on this ship, and they use it. Looks like they use a deep fake. It looks so in a movie that has actually thing. I'll compliment this movie about the effects are great, mostly practical. The spaceship porn is on point. The music on point. Sound design on point. And I saw this movie in IMAX. I've seen it twice. IMAX and Dolby Digital. Amazing. In terms of that experience the weakness is in the story the script the story and the casting i really feel the biggest weak points of this and the unoriginality of this i wanted something take it further now we'll get into third act later i want to hear what you have to say alan but i was profoundly disappointed i just thought well i'll just i'll just enjoy the spaceship porn because wow 
that worked. I mean, the way the ships moved, you really believed it. The way they docked or moved around or were in peril, um, the sound design, I, I, I was all in. I thought that was so well done. I really believe Fede Alvarez, really good director, really good director, who had perhaps some mandates from the studio about, we well, got to have this. We got to have this. And the callbacks from dialogue pissed me off. There's a, there's a line, you, you, you bitch. Like it was just, I, I groaned a couple times. Now I did see the movie with my daughter. She had a good time. She's watching the movie with her dad. So can I say I had a good time? Yes. Did I enjoy the movie? Major problems. Um, <laughs> It's not even the worst alien movie. It's mid tier. It's serviceable. So, um, I already did my non spoiler review. I gave it a four, maybe a 4.5 on second viewing. Like, oh, some things I like. I still can't recommend it. And we are not going to be talking about this a month from now or a year from now when they make another alien movie after we forget this alien movie. So, we'll get deeper into the spoilers. Alan, I got to hear your thoughts because. Yeah. You are not a big horror fan. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like it's no longer the worst of the Alien movies. It, it moved up a notch or two. It's mid. It's yeah, mid. It, it is the seventh installment. Yes. Way. Okay. So, I saw, I've seen Alien once, uh, and that was two years ago because we were doing a video about it, which you can look up on the channel. Um, because, and... I liked it. I liked a lot. It, it was scary. I, I liked the gravity. I liked the depth of it. I, I liked the the groundedness of it. And I also liked the characters in terms of them being, you know, the everyday blue collar worker who, who's been put in a dangerous position by the corporate corporate gods above. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll describe Alien Romulus this way. Um, it, since now Disney owns the Alien franchise, uh, it's as if they built a roller coaster uh, based on the Alien franchise. Uh, that's what this movie is. Uh, I, I'm not as held to the lore as you are or as most people watching us right now. Now Disney owns Alien? What is next? Are. Um, but I will say I had fun. I, I would not say I, I was afraid, but there were definitely thrills. Uh, there de there's definitely suspense, which I enjoyed. Um, so I will say I was, I'm not saying this is the greatest movie ever. Uh, I can't speak to anything regarding the lore or the franchise. Uh, all I could do is tell you when I sat down in my seat for the first two and a half acts, uh, I was having a good time. And then, uh, then the second half right. of the, of, of the film, uh, sorry, second half of the second act. Oh, sorry. Right. Second act of the third act. And then the second, third act is when I was like, I just want to go home now. Uh, the second, third act in this movie uh, was just, you know, so unnecessary, uh, which is why I'm going to call it the second, third act, because you could literally cut it out and still have it was like a, a great third, movie. third act. It had like two, three, third acts. Yeah. Kept, like, and, is it over? Going, is it over? Right. And, and going back to that article we read, um, the to me, where the wheels fell off was when it went CG. Because uh, up until then, I was I was buying into it. There, there are other things that bothered me, which we'll get into spoilers. But I would say, uh, you know, I would give it a bare recommendation. I would also say I understand for people who are hardcore into the Alien franchise, uh, I understand why you you will not like this movie, and I and I get it. But in terms of someone who just bought a yeah. ticket and wanted to have a good time at a movie, yeah. you know, I got I had a good time. I, I think this. You know, it's like uh, it's like getting Shakespeare light. You know, you you can you can get all your friends to go see this movie, have a good time, and, and then and then afterwards you say, but but hey, have you seen the real Shakespeare or have you seen the real Alien? And then go back and see it. Um, but this is like I said, this is a roller coaster version of the original. Well, the thing with Ash. That was the thing that bugged me the most. Oh, let me ask you this: Was was Ian Holm actually doing it, or was it a deep fake? Uh, it seemed like they AI'd his voice, and it looked it was definitely a deep fake CG effect. Okay. So he wasn't and involved. That's what I meant by like um, a CGI uh, version of of the previous actor that played the voice synthetic. 
Ash. It was a deep fake. In the movie. It took me out of the movie. It really did. It way took me out of it. It's <laughs> it's a distractingly bad in a movie that had lots of really good effects. You know? So um Ian Holm passed away in 2020. Mm-hmm. So they obviously went to his family, and this is a bad precedent. Are we going to get actors that look like? Are we going to cast um, actors that were dead in new movies? Like they're already doing like, it. They're, they're doing that with James Dean. I, I don't I know mean, how far it's gotten, but there's a lawsuit that erupted from uh, Crispin Glover. He was not in Back to the Future two and three. Mm-hmm. They look, found an actor that looked like him, and then put makeup on him, turned him upside down. And he's in Back to the Future too, but it's not Crispin Glover. Mm-hmm. That's a the biggest failing of uh, nearly perfect films. Back to the Future two and three should have had Crispin Glover. Yeah, well, but if you can now do this, it's why not just bring uh, Sigourney Weaver back for some reason? I I think it sets a bad precedent. I don't think this movie was as, was scary because we've seen it before. We mm-hmm. already know what's going to happen. Yeah. Any sort of any fear or trepidation comes from well, I know what facehuggers do, and what the hell is the incubation period on an alien now? Uh, it's a uh, five minutes. Like it was, it felt the right amount of time in the first Alien. They've accelerated this where um a. Uh, 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 a, an alien can incubate in your body in 15 minutes yeah. and then you can give birth to a hybrid human alien xenomorph that will grow to full adult size. He just spoiled the movie, man. That was the big surprise I mentioned earlier, by the way. I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to say it. I'd still didn't say it, but obviously this is a live stream. So he, Chris just, uh, Mr. Gore just spoiled it. The big surprise at the end. In, Five minutes. Yeah, let's not yeah, forget I, that. I, let's talk about that. Yeah, let, let's not forget that there's a, there's a literal timer in this movie, and this yeah. timer goes down, and so you know how much how long an incubation period takes because there's a timer involved, okay. right? And, and, and you know, yeah, without getting into spoilers, but you know it's less than fifteen minutes. Well, I mean, get into spoilers. We're in the spoiler territory now. Um, it, okay. it's it's okay. So we're clearly establishing. We're going spoilers right now. Yeah, I know we've been okay. doing it. Look, the, the 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 thing is this at the end of the day, this is the corporate mandated mm-hmm. alien movie. That's what this is, made by a very talented director who d- I believe the director did his job. This yeah. is the movie you want me to make. I made it. And he had good intentions. I mm-hmm. love the the at least um, the practical effects they used. I love the spaceship. The spaceships, I bought it. Because most movies you see that have spaceships, it's like, oh, it went from here to there. It went from there to here. Who cares? He really built it up. That it was that The rings around the planet that worked, mm-hmm. the monstrosity of, of the Romulus Remus space station, that worked. Um. They got into a little bit of lore with the scientists about that. Um, why are they studying the aliens? Well, it's because man is very fragile. Man is fragile. So how do you make um, man less fragile? Is you you alter the DNA to make a version of man that can survive the elements on other planets. So that was really interesting. But that was very brief. Represented by the dumb CG deep fake of Ash, played by uh, uh, Ian Holm, hey, resurrected Ian Holm. with software, and I just it didn't sell it to me. Um, the bucket is better than the movie in the end, so it still is a pass review, you know, under a five for me, but and not the worst Alien movie because so many other parts of it really worked. Mm-hmm. I was you know I, the one thing I'll give it to. I was never bored. It was it's slow in the beginning, but I'm inter- interested, yeah. right? So, yeah, yeah I guess that's, that's why I give it a more positive view. I mean, it, it's not like it, I was disengaged. Uh, the Ash thing, I didn't didn't bother me because I'm just not held tightly to the lore like that, or to the, I'm not that big a fan of the franchise. Um, 
But I will say it just went off the rails when okay, so now we're going to spoil it. Yeah, let's get let's get to the last yeah. third so, of the film. The so, third act. So the there so in the first third act, um there's a part where they're uh they're they're climbing up uh, an elevator shaft. Uh, and then you know the the acid is float is there from the aliens. Uh, I thought it was interesting that they used the anti grav uh, portion of they turned off gravity in order to to to, to win. Um, I thought that was interesting, but then it really got CG heavy, and right. uh, and it's noticeable. That's the problem with CG is we are attuned so to notice what's CG and what's actually real. Yes. Uh, and then they go into this final alien. This new alien, and I'm like, this is the this is yeah why? yeah. Oh, it, this is the, you know you a movie should build up to something, and it right. builds up to this this humanoid alien xenomorph, and it looked horrible. Uh, yes, it didn't look scary. It just stood out. It pulled you out of the movie, and um, and it was just like this is not the right direction you want to take this thing. Uh, this is not how you want to end this movie. Uh, because literally they could have just cut it off before that and ended the film. And I think people would feel feel a little bit better about the movie. As soon as as soon one. as the, as soon as the one girl said, I'm pregnant, you knew. Yeah. And the whole thing is, I wonder now, Alan, do you think there's an abortion analogy in this movie? Some abortion. I don't think there's any sort of overt commentary at all. The movie is not woke. It's not like at all, I, like yeah. you know. I you know, can say I, I hate when things like, divert. Wait, wait, let me finish. Okay. It's when something's diverse that people say that's woke. Not really. The first Alien was diverse, yeah. just organically. Just now they push it, so it's annoying. Yeah, but, it's it's um, a mandate as opposed to something organic. Exactly. Uh, and exactly. then the abortion thing. Look, uh, you know, she uh, she kept the baby. Right. Right, you know, and, uh, she had concern for the baby, so I don't think this was uh, this was a cautionary tale about not get not having abortions. Yeah, you know, right, it, right. It wasn't that? Yeah. In fact, I, I would I would go the other direction, even though it it uh, no, but it, it but there's it was wrong. There are two scenes to pay attention to. One, there's a scene where there's they find the alien cocoon, and the mm -hmm. guy takes the cattle prod, he right. sticks it up the giant vagina looking thing. To electrocute it and that, that's what I was saying. It, it literally did look. I'm watching this, I'm watching this that this part he's talking about. And this is actually when the fully grown xenomorph comes out. And I swear I'm looking at him like, is that a vagina I see? Like literally. It literally looks like a vagina. I mean it's is it's, it's, it is it's got that shape. The whole oval shape. Just I'm I'm not trying to it, it, it looks it's literally that. And uh, it is shown like a good three times, three to four times, in in that in that particular scene. I'm like, uh, wow, this thing is literally coming out. And of course, it's nothing given both to it. It's inside of a kind of an egg like structure. But uh, I don't know. It, it really did look like a vagina. I'm just basically abort the thing in the cocoon. Then yeah. there's her giving birth, and the thing comes out, and it's all. You know, it's like a huge, you know what it looks like? Slender Man or something. Yeah. Like Slender Man with alien like pointy things. And it looked just gross mm. and grew in 20 minutes. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't feel real. It and it, 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 grew, it grew like within, like, literally, it grew within, uh, I think, at most four minutes, maybe five. But it, it grew rapidly. It grew faster than the original Xenomorph in the original film. That came out in seventy nine. That thing took like at least maybe I guess fifteen to twenty minutes before they saw it, if I if I remember. At that point in the movie, I believe they had fifteen minutes left before the uh, right the right station crash. Um, yeah. Well, the, to your first point, um, that would be like if you had a chance to abort Hitler, would you? <laughs> yeah, or I mean, an that, alien. I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it that one. You know, the, here here's the funny thing. So. Um, the the overall theme of what what got all these people in trouble? What got most of the crew dead? It, it was this attitude of "Hey, we need to go back for our friend," because uh, they had just left everyone behind and gone on the ship and got out. They would have uh, things would have at least turned out better for two 
two or three of the well, characters in the movie. Andy the android was the smartest one. Yeah, that's why I, I liked his character the best. He's yeah, the best I, I, actor I, I, in the movie. He, he's the best. Let me finish. He's the yeah. best actor mm-hmm. because he starts one way as this. Why does the thing have silver teeth? Kind of almost on the spectrum, weird guy who likes dad jokes, but he's he's dedicated to brother. Why do they call each other brother and sister? Makes no sense. Stupid. But, um, you know, fine. And then he changes when he is installed and gets an upgrade. So now he's on the corporate agenda. He'll still save them, but his whole thing is he leaves the pregnant girl behind the door right. and says, no, because if I open the door, we all die. If I don't open the door and leave you behind, only one of us dies. Right. So he's, he's just sticking with logic. Yeah. So well, also they could have killed. They could have ended things early by killing Navarro, uh, who right. was, who's who had the face hugger going. Um, but it was uh, yeah. It was this is this is the thing is you know there is there is some nobility to the idea of go back for your friends, leave no one behind. But in this case, in this movie, doing that actually caused more harm than anything. And you know, it, and it, it just it, there there it, are. It, and, so, no, no, I, I just want to finish by saying, you know, that's a noble thing to, that's a noble attribute to have, but to have a film say, uh, no, that's, that's the, actually the wrong thing to do feels like it's, you know, it, it goes, it goes to my conspiracy theories of, uh, you know, these, these ideals, these, uh, you know, these values that we have as human beings to support one another, to be, to have friendships, to support our friends. It feels like they're, this is kind of a subtle twist on that saying, uh, maybe you don't want to do that. Well, look, I just, the, my biggest complaint, my two biggest complaints, not scary and the greatest hits. And they repeat all these moments and do them worse. So there's a two I'll point out in the end when she is like, she, the, the human alien hybrid is after her and she, goes into the locker and puts on the space suit, mm-hmm. right? But in the least sexy way possible, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, Michael Seagraf says, in the, I'm sick of actri- actresses with zero sexuality. She was oh. not sexy. Sigourney Weaver was sexy. No bra in a tank top and this tight underwear. Sexy, subtle, and sexy. I don't need full nudity. Right. Find sci-fi. Give me sexy at least. So they were. Well, here's, here's, let me, then, let me, and, wait, wait, one more. Wait, one more at the end when she does the diary into the recorder. Mm-hmm. That's right out of. It's the same thing yeah. as the end of Alien. Like so, the repeating moments just not as well and not scary. I'm sorry. It's I'm sorry. I'm out. I'm out. I'm well, out. Let me, yeah, let me talk about the sexiness. Um, this is a trend. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it here. This is a trend going on. Um, but there seems to be a trend to make Asian women ugly in movies. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have Navarro here. And that's the other thing is there's an Asian actress with the last name Navarro. And uh, and when we if we talk about another movie on the list, uh, the same thing happens here. But to not give an Asian an Asian name uh, and then to shave her head and not make her look sexy at all compared to the other two women in the movie... Uh, I think last week we talked about, um, let's see, uh, the uh, you. There's a movie you. Were, oh, I can't even remember her name, but there was an Asian in the movie. And I asked you, did they uglify her? And you said yes. Um, you know, it, Jessica Henwick. That was it. Because um, she she's a beautiful woman, but they put her in all these movies and they uglify her. They don't make her look attractive at all, or or alluring at all, um, and. You know, and they do the same thing here. Uh, the The other complaint I have is this crew of of Gen Z misfits. Uh, I they don't look like they could actually have done the things and survived as far as they had in this movie. To me, it, this crew looked like they should have been killed way earlier in the movie. Uh, and and that goes to the point of you know you strong people should look strong. Uh, you know. Athletic people should look athletic. That's not this crew. And, and it, you know, it, it just seems like, okay, we're just going to hire pretty people, uh, except for the Asian, and then, uh, and then give them, you know, make them look heroic and make them look athletic. 
you know, they do a lot of running. They do a lot of jumping. They do a lot of fighting. Uh, and I just, deep down, it's like, could they really do this in real life? All right. Final thoughts, Alan, before we go to chat comments. Okay. So despite all my complaints there, uh, this is not a horror film. It's a thriller. Uh, it's a roller coaster ride. Uh, it's like Twister. You know, you're there, moves you from one scene to the next uh, with the thrills and turns that you want. Um, and so I'll give it a bare recommendation for that. Well, I'm I'm a fan of Alien, uh, Alien and Aliens. The other films are almost dismissible, and this is another dismissible mid Alien movie. The best part about it is that we got some amazing buckets. Maybe I'll collect them all. <laughs> I'm not worried about collecting buckets, but uh, yeah, I, I agree. It's it's, it's kind of mid. I'm not a big fan either, like Alan. But I did feel that, like, not just because of Chris said it. I mean, I was actually thinking about going into this movie just fresh and brand new, not looking up anything, not researching, not watching the first film at all. But then last night I watched the first film and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and get give myself some backstory because I could tell based on some reviews I've seen and some just, just I'm thinking it might be it might be a little bit more Easter eggy <clears throat> meaning that you're going to need some backstory of the first film so having to watch the first film and actually when I saw this movie I realized yeah you kind of do need to watch the first movie and that's what I want to say in my review if if I do end up giving a, um, a review on my channel I want to say exactly like you do need to see the first movie or at least read a very good plot synopsis breakdown of the movie, like I guess on Wikipedia. But you really more or less need to see it, you know, so that your mind can actually see so and remember. So you can actually remember and say, "Hey, this was from this move, this part of the movie, or this was that." And, and oh, th there was that. There was that is said. We all like to do that, you know. We all like to Deadpool it or Deadpool Wolverine it now. Um, but it's very CG based. You know, and I'm trying to keep track of my time. It is 109 here in San Francisco, San Fran. But it's really it's CG, not CG based, but kids basically playing roles of uh, older adults. And, you know, I, I wasn't convinced that they were actually piloting a spacecraft, let alone escaping these creatures and, you know, doing all these things. Uh, I mean, yeah, they should have pretty much been dead all along because they're not trained space crew like the original crew was from the first movie. And uh, it's not that, you know, it's, 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 it, he says it's a very grisly feel. It's, what he means is, like, those Sigourney Weaver's crew, you know, Ripley and all them, they were pretty much hardened, not really hardened, but they, they all those crew, all the, all the, all the whole crew had experience Every individual of the crew had experience. You can tell they had some some job experience in other positions, and they were they were more adults. You know, they just they weren't just a random crew. They were employed by somebody, and their employer ends up betraying them, saying that they are expendable. You know, uh, and so in this film, it's like a random group of kids that essentially want to steal some product on a ship to go back home and sell it so that they can pay for a transfer so they don't have to walk for five more years or whatever. And, you know, and while that seems like a good idea, th that seems like a good idea portrayed by people who are older than them. And they just wanted this movie to appeal to a younger audience, yet it's rated R. And, of course, it's... It, I, Having, having just heard that it was uh, Alien was bought by Disney, Disney is going to do some Gen Z, you know, let's try to get some representation for the younger uh, generation in this movie. You know, of course they're going to do that. And, you know, it's it's just... You know, it's not that they give, like, any type of drama going on, you know, other than the fact that one of them is pregnant and, you know, the father is not revealed. Um... But interesting enough, it's I think Kaylee Spaney was was good. You know, I can't really judge her as an actress. You know, because I don't really judge acting. But everybody keeps quoting uh, 
I, I forget his name. His name is... They keep quoting David Johnson as Andy, as the better actor of everybody. Um, because he plays the role so, so well. And I, I don't think I've seen this guy any... Gen Y, okay. I don't think... That's my generation, actually, Gen Y. I don't think that he... I don't know how good of an actor he is. You know, so... Forgive me, it, it takes a while to get my thoughts across because of my autism. I'm just... I'm not really good at uh, giving a good presentation. So... So so I'm going to definitely work on that for my next next review. Uh, anyway, uh, I also want to review The, the Deliverance because I feel like I, I have a lot more to say about that movie. I do actually have another ticket tomorrow to go see it in Dolby. Because I want I want that patch, you know. I think I want to, you know, sport that as I give my review. I plan on giving my review tomorrow. There's other there's there's some other people talking. There's um, you know, we got Will Shift here. I don't know if it's spoilery or spoiler free, but just hours after having a root canal, I went to see one of my most anticipated movies of the year. And while I will admit that Alien Romulus was a much better experience than sitting in a dentist chair for two hours getting fish hooked. If I'm being honest, there were things that I loved about this movie. And that's painful when you have a whoop canal. I had one like last year and I'm going to tell you, that shit hurts. Uh, that's why I looked at my cup. I've got soda in it and uh, my dentist told me to stop drinking so much soda pop. And I drank a lot of Pepsi every day. And things that I didn't. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. That's an Easter egg. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. What are you waiting for, huh? Colonizers come face to face with the most terrifying life form in the universe while scavenging the deep ends of a derelict space station. So leading up to Alien Romulus, there was a lot of talk about this movie returning this franchise to its roots. More specifically, bringing it back to its horror-themed roots. Which presumably makes a director like Fede Alvarez the perfect person to execute that vision. While watching this movie, you can tell that Fede is a huge fan of the franchise. And thinking about it now, it feels like the goal more than anything was to bridge the gap between all of the different entries in the franchise. Even the entries that some people don't really care for. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. Yes, this film takes place in between Alien and Aliens chronologically, and that's made very clear throughout the course of the film. But Romulus surprisingly makes much larger connections to other entries in the Alien franchise. And this is something that I actually loved about it. And you know what movies I'm talking about, the polarizing ones that some people seem to hate, but that I personally enjoy. It doesn't ignore those movies, and I found that refreshing as a fan. For context, I am a huge Alien franchise fan, and I enjoy every film in this series to different degrees. And that's what's great about the Alien movies to me. They vary in quality from guilty pleasure all the way up to masterpieces of cinema. I enjoy a lot of the big creative swings that some people seem to hate. Why are you the way that you are? That being said, for Romulus, in the simplest terms, I can describe it as this. There are things in this movie that I've never seen in an Alien movie before. And at the same time, there are things in this movie that try a little bit too hard to make callbacks to previous entries. And some of those things were just a bit too on the nose for me. After a while, as an audience member or even a fan, you get to the point where you get tired of having your intelligence insulted. Like when a character in a new movie recites a line of dialogue from one of the original movies word for word or in just a very overt way. It's never as clever as the writer thinks it is and it always comes off as very cheap to me. And there is a little bit of that going on in this movie, although it's not a deal breaker. Oh no, not again. Right off the bat, I have to say, one of my biggest positives for the film is the world that they built within it. 
They made sure that everything from the costumes to the environments to the architecture to the technology is consistent with the films that came before, especially with the films that sandwiched this one. I also enjoyed how they touched upon the oppressive nature of the Wayland Corporation this time around. Now they've always been portrayed as an evil organization who has no problem sacrificing human lives. But in Romulus, you really get to see how their monopoly on everything impacts people's lives on the ground level. In fact, it's the whole driving force behind the character's motivations in this film. I'm not entirely sure that the main group's objective in this film makes a ton of sense, and I did question how exactly a space station that is in close proximity to a Wayland outpost was kind of just abandoned by the corporation at some point, especially if you take into consideration what is on board. I don't get it. Another highlight of the film for me is the relationship between the main character, Rain, and her brother from another assembly line, Andy. Obviously, androids play a huge role in alien movies. And I would argue that some of the android characters are some of the best characters in the entire franchise. And I did think that Andy was another great example of that. He's not quite as complex as, say, David was. But I did think it was interesting to see another side of androids this time around. A more compassionate and protective side even if he is programmed to be that way. It's kind of ironic that a android-human relationship is what pushes this story along, especially when we are used to seeing androids being more of a complication than anything. I'm having trouble. Obviously, I'm not going to go into super spoiler territory here, but this movie does feature the return of an iconic character, albeit in CGI form. Now, there was a lot of talk about this film before its release, Talking about that, uh, the other android. Um, I saw I've been spoiled by Chris, but uh, the the original, fuck, the original. Oh, Ash. Release ...about its use of practical effects. And when they are used, they are used effectively, and I appreciated when they did that. But the film does still use CGI, and unsurprisingly, those moments are less effective. And a big example of that is this returning legacy character, and they clearly use the Princess Leia from Rogue One technology to bring him to life. And it's a technology that still looks awkward to me. And to make matters worse, this character is basically used, initially, to deliver one big exposition dump. Basically saying, in case you haven't seen the original Alien, this is what happened on the Nostromo. It felt kind of clunky and like they were trying too hard or not hard enough to make connections to previous films. Game over, man! It's game over! Romulus obviously features a younger cast of characters predominantly, none of which really left much of an impression on me. They felt like they were quite literally written to be victims for xenomorphs and nothing more. That being said, I think some of the best parts of this movie are the more action and horror-centric sequences. And this is where the situations I've never seen in an alien movie before come into play. Normally, I would not be impressed by a movie just adding more of something because they think that that's going to make right. it scarier. But in this case, when it comes to the face huggers, multiple face huggers lunging at these people as they run away is terrifying. There's also a pretty intense scene involving the face huggers that slows things down a little bit and shows them in a way that we've never really seen them before. Another standout sequence for me was a zero gravity fight with the xenomorphs. It's one of those scenes where it seems like it just keeps going and the further and further along it goes, things just keep getting worse and worse. And it uses the acid blood that the aliens have in a way that, again, I've never seen before. And yes, for those who are wondering, the xenomorphs look awesome in their practical effects glory. I like it a lot. Although, if I'm being honest, this movie was bloody and violent, 
as advertised, but I was expecting a little bit more when it came to that stuff, especially considering Fede Alvarez is again the director. The deaths were pretty standard to me when it comes to Alien movies. Now again, this next part is going to be difficult to talk about without spoilers, but I'll do my best. The final act of this movie is simultaneously batshit insane, and it will also be the most divisive part. As I mentioned earlier, the finale makes direct references to the mythology in some of the most polarizing films in the franchise. Now, if you don't like those movies, then this finale might kill the movie for you. I was personally okay with it because, again, I enjoy the mythology that they established in those films. I do wish it was done with a little bit more practical effects rather than CGI, and a few design changes I think would have gone a long way. For perspective, the ending very much felt like a cross between Prometheus and Alien Resurrection, which is not something that I ever thought I would say. What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? Bob like a cross changes I think would have gone a long way. For perspective, the ending very much felt like a cross between Prometheus and Alien Resurrection, which is not something that I ever thought I would say. What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? Bottom line, Alien Romulus did not blow me away like I hoped it would, and it was kind of a mixed bag. To me, its best parts were unsurprisingly when it tried to do new things. Because I do feel like that has become the franchise's calling card at this point. Its weakest parts are when it plays it too safe and tries to rope you in with cheap nostalgia bait. Because all that really does is make me want to watch those much better movies that you are referencing. If I had to rank Romulus in the franchise, it would be on the lower end of that ranking. But again, that's not necessarily a bad thing coming from me because I enjoy all of these movies to some degree. Alien Romulus very much feels like a fan film with a budget, but I do think that it's worth watching if you are a major fan of the entire franchise like I am. It was an entertaining but flawed experience for me, and that's why I'm going to give it The Cat House. Saved by kitty litter. <laughs> Y'all be cool. Right on. I mean, you know, yeah, I, I can see it's definitely like real you know, bait. You know, I'm not. Thank God, I'm not into this movie. I'm not. I'm not into really this this movie. I said, that's just. It's. Did I just watch this one? Hold on. I'd like to check to see if I have seen it or not. Uh, oh, I have. Okay, I thought I always saw this one yesterday, but I didn't. I didn't know, I didn't know, oh my god, I did not know that. 2024! Uh, how, how, how much longer are we going? Okay, you know what, uh, we're gonna kind of spread this out a little bit, um, so when I say we, I mean I, we're gonna definitely spread this out into another, another... Another one maybe tomorrow, just because of timing and the fact that, well, um, yeah, the fact that, this is the Adam does, sorry. What was that on type? So here, here's Adam does movies. I like to watch Alien it. Romulus it's is the newest 70s. entry to the Alien franchise, a rich tapestry of. Alien Romulus is the newest entry to the Alien franchise, a rich tapestry of film that has been building since 1979 with Alien, followed by Aliens, then Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, Alien Erection, Alien vs. Predator, or AVP for short, Alien vs. Predator Requiem, or AVP Requiem for short, Prometheus, Alien Coven shit, I mean Coven, no I was right there, Monsters vs. Aliens, Alien Ant Farm, Elf. Today though, Alien Romulus is out in theaters and I saw it, so where does it stack up in this franchise? What do I think about this film? Let's find out in a spoiler free review right now. Alien Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion is rated R. 
It's a little under two hours. It's full of violence, swearing, some gore, and good old-fashioned scares. And I'm not going to beat around the xenomorph. I freaking ate this movie up. Yum, 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 yum. I had a great time. But I can also completely understand why you might go to this movie and have a terrible time. Because this is one of those somewhat safer, soft reboots. It does take place after Alien, but prior to Aliens, I believe. It has that very retro aesthetic you saw in the original Alien. It has some of the same camera shots you saw in the original Alien. It has teenager Ripley. It's not Ripley, it's a different character altogether, but come on. It, it's Rip They're all Ripley every time we do these kind of things. It's always a new Ripley. Disney owns Alien now, along with uh, pretty much everything else, so we have a younger generation of characters so that we can make 15 more of these films down the road if anyone, in fact, survives this thing. <laughs> I'll let you know in a spoiler review, which will be later this week, so feel free to subscribe to the channel if you like my commentary. You could even like the video if you want to go that extra step. I would appreciate it. But yeah, I, I post a lot of videos every week, all movie-related all the time. You have the over-the-top douchebag character who hates synthetics, and that will be pretty much his only character trait, and you will be actively rooting for him to die every chance there is. There's a boring pretty boy guy, there's a couple other chicks that are just there to fill out the roster, and that's perfectly fine because when I go to an alien movie, I want atmosphere, I want some scares, I want that cool-ass xenomorph front and center. And thankfully, we get all of that and more. There's face huggers running around, jumping all over the place. There's explosions. There's ship docking. If you're a big fan of docking ships, you get like 15 different docking moments. What an, what an experience for dockers out there. Kaylee Spanny plays Rain, aka Ripley. She and her android companion, Andy, are going to be the central focus of this film. I know they're called synthetics. It's just a weird word for me to say. It always has been. So android, synthetic potato, potato, tomato, tomato, whatever you want to go with is fine. They have a sympathetic backstory. They are marooned on this garbage planet that has no sunlight, mining day in and day out. She finally earns enough credits to get off this God's forsaken rock, but unfortunately the company, that sketchy ass company we've all grown to love over the Alien franchise, Whalen Industries, decided to up the amount of time needed by double. So she's not going anywhere. Or is she? Because it just so happens Lady Luck might be on her side as a decommissioned space station just so happens to be in their purview. So she and a bunch of other guys are gonna get on this thing and try to blow out of Dodge. And of course, things go off without a hitch. That's all I'm going to give you as far as story is concerned. Now, as far as the reason people might not like this film, it's because it does the same thing other soft reboots do. The Force Awakens, Jurassic World, it's familiar. You're going back to that original alien look. And again, some of the same camera shots, catchphrases, and the way this movie kind of beat for beat plays out. That's not to say this movie doesn't take some risks, take a few chances. I think it does. And I, <laughs> I'm like... Back and forth on whether or not they were good ideas, but at the end of the day, I was very hooked on this film. I think it really does keep you on the edge of your seat. It's intense as shit. I don't think it's like necessarily scary at all, but there were definitely moments where, yeah, I can see audiences being very panicked about what's to come or what's beyond the next corridor. Visually, this thing looks beautiful. I think it's the prettiest of the Alien movies full stop because it has the luxury of modern tech and it gets the blueprint of what came Came before and what people loved, it takes both, meshes them together almost effortlessly. There's practical effects, there's of course some CG in the mix, but I thought it all looked very good. Score is amazing as well. I really don't have a lot of bad things to say about this movie other than, yeah, I could see the familiarity being annoying because when you go from Alien to Aliens, there is a complete switch of movies. You're watching two very different films set in the same universe. One's a horror thriller, the next is an action film, and even the third movie has a different vibe, which is to say terrible. And then there's Alien Resurrection, which is this campy, schlocky, silly film that I actually enjoy, but I understand that I'm in the minority on that. And again, 
if Alien 3 wasn't so bad and we kept Alien continuing the solid story sense. of the first two films, then yeah, Resurrections would be horrible. But because I already came from something bad, in contrast, it was just a fun change of pace. Now with Romulus, it feels like we're back to basics, we're getting good sci-fi horror again, and for that I'm thankful, even if it is a bit of copy and paste. I think I'm going to leave it there. You will find on this channel that oftentimes my positive reviews are quite a bit shorter than my negative ones. Because when I really like a film, I don't want to ruin it for people. I want them to go out and watch it and make up their own mind. They may not agree with me, but I still want to give them that opportunity to see for themselves. So there you have it. I will have a spoiler video just to remind you. So again, think about subscribing to the channel. Please leave a comment if you like this film or if you did not and let me know why without spoilers i will remove that crap if i see it if you love what i'm doing here please think about supporting the channel by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adam does movies different tier levels different ways you can support there's obviously perks that come along with it and lastly i have a second channel adam does rants where okay, i'm just adam we can stop that shit you, you know we're all about the adam does rants and everything and the, and the other the other channel, I you know I don't we really, I'm not here for that. So uh, I like I like watching other reviews, of course. You know everybody's got mixed reviews. I feel like this this film, Romulus, has got mixed reviews so far. Everybody's some people don't like it, some people do, and you know uh, this is kind of like more or less a, a Deadpool and Wolverine type of situation. Um, of course, you go into it multiple weeks, but The Crow. This one is one that people, and this is coming out this coming weekend, like, as you can see, the 22nd, it comes out the 22nd, which is Thursday, and also Friday the 23rd, so this coming weekend, like, the weekend, the, not this weekend, but next weekend, I guess you would say, and that is, uh, you know, that's something that people are going to be really, you know, talking about, and I just want to say that uh, it's, it's been real, it's been fun, I don't want to go too much into it right now. Try to keep it as spoiler free right now so that some people can have a chance to watch it. And, uh, you know, I mean, with Deadpool and Wolverine, people will go on spoiler free for about an entire week. But if you can go spoiler free for at least Friday and Saturday with a spoiler wee review on a Sunday, you know, maybe a Monday for some, maybe for Sunday is my limit, then fine. So, um, yeah. Uh, well, anyway, thank you for watching uh, my live stream of. You know, this covering this uh, alien wildness along with a little bit of uh, the, 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 the deliverance. Uh, like well, and subscribe if you want to see more. And uh, have, a good, have, have a good start of your weekend.